so what do we know about least squares? Well, in the last video, we learned that least squares has both a frequentist and a generative interpretation, right? You can view least squares as a maximum likelihood problem. And, um, you know, it's a special, uh, it's a special case of ridge regression, which has both the um, generative and frequentist interpretations. And now in this video, we're going to show you that least squares, uh, least squares regression has a closed form solution. I don't, I don't know how many of you knew that. Maybe some of you did, but maybe some of you don't. It's kind of cool. It actually, ha you can actually solve for the coefficients. Okay, so now I, I, uh, I'm just going to switch notation here before I start. Um, in the last video, I used beta. Here, I'm going to use lambda. Okay, so let's write down the problem of least squares. Okay, so that's plain old least squares. All right, so how do I find that minimizer? Well, I'm gonna take the gradient and set it equal to zero. I like to do one coordinate at a time just to make sure that all my multiplication is done correctly. And then I'll put it into gradient format later. Okay, so I'm gonna take a derivative with respect to lambda j, and then we'll vectorize it to make it a gradient. Okay, so now I'm going to put it back into matrix notation here. That's the, the jth feature vector. There. Okay, so now I'm going to create the gradient, and that's going to get set equal to zero in a minute. Okay, so the gradient means just stack all this in terms of j. And now it's easy because I've done one coordinate. The rest is very easy. Cool. And now again, since I'm minimizing, I want to set that gradient equal to zero. And the great the at at uh, at zero, the solution is going to be called lambda star. Okay, lambda star is the solution there. All right. So now I can actually just write down what lambda star. I can just simplify and just write down what lambda star actually is. And then inverting that big matrix there. And there we go. Okay, cool. So these squares has an analytical solution, and that is it. Now, before I finish this video, um, I just want to introduce some notation that ends up being kind of generally useful. Uh, so let's say that we take this lambda and use it to make um, use it to make predictions on all of the x values. So remember, the x's are fixed and known. It's, it's a statistics thing, but they are fixed and known. So what happens when we, we make predictions on those points, OK? So let's let's just draw that here. Okay, I'm just going to borrow a little space right over here. So let's say this is x1, x2, and x3. And my data points were, uh, where were they? Here, here, and here. Okay, so then I do least squares. And that's my, that's, a, that's from lambda star there. 
And then if I actually look at the predictions at x1, x2, and x3, I get this value, this value, and that value. So it's like it's like they, the data's been smoothed out, right? It's like pulling them down to that to the line. All right. So those the predictions that that we make, um, they're called y hat. Okay. So it's y hat, and y hat equals maybe I don't know if I know if I want to put a bar on that just to show it's a vector, but in any case, there it is. Okay. So there's my my data matrix times lambda star. Okay, so I'm just going to write down the equation here for the for lambda star. Cool. And so this thing, believe it or not, is called the hat matrix. And it really doesn't look like a hat. I'm not sure why it's called a hat, come to think of it, but um, it's it's called H. Oh, I know why it's called a hat matrix. It's because if you multiply Y by H, it makes it Y hat. <laughs> oh, I should have thought of that before. That's really cool. Okay, anyway, so H you can think of as kind of a smoother of the Y value. So it takes Y from 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 Y to Y hat. <laughs> All right, thanks.